foods. I can't eat soul food anymore. I can't eat Caribbean food anymore. I can't eat African food anymore and be healthy. Or I have to go on this extreme diet or extreme fast. I'm going to tell you right now, that's not sustainable. Hey y'all, how you doing? My name is Jillian Koinu. I'm a registered dietitian and a wellness coach, and I teach people how to enjoy a healthy lifestyle guilt-free. So today we're going to be talking about reasons why your healthy lifestyle is not working. And listen y'all, like I said from the beginning, you don't have to feel guilty about it because this is something that we are all struggling with. And it's even something that I have been on a journey within my own lifestyle. So I just want to stop there. And I want to say this literally, this is a guilt-free zone. Okay. So what is the first reason that people struggle with a healthy lifestyle, even though they're trying so much? And I'm going to be reading my notes while I talk about this today. Number one, you constantly diet. Okay. Comment down below if you can say that you have tried at least five different diets in your lifetime. If you have, just comment down below and let me know. Listen, it's more common than you think. In fact, there's research that shows that people who diet, they may lose the weight, but guess what? After about six months to a year, they gain it back and even more. If that's you, listen, it's more common than you think. You will find out that this is something that so many people struggle with. So what is up with this whole diet thing? Like, why do so many people diet? Well, I think that a big reason why is because we as Americans, we are overworked and overstressed. And we feel like there's so many different things to juggle. I got to know all the different ingredients in my food. I got to look at nutrition facts. I got to exercise. I got to take care of my kids. I got to go to work. I have to work when I come home because my job is still expecting me to answer emails. I don't have time. I barely have time to sleep. <laughs> so for many people, they find, especially like after that 25 year old range, they're like, okay, I'm starting to gain weight and I don't really know what to do. And dieting seems like a perfect thing to do so if you don't diet what are some other things you can do well one of the first things you can do is figure out some lifestyle changes that may not be that hard to do that can help you so i'll give you a couple and then we'll go on to the next thing so one thing that you can do if you are trying to figure out a different way other than dieting is you can try to find simple things to eat okay simplicity is key. Sometimes we struggle so much with trying to figure out how to eat healthy because we look online, we look on social media, and what do we see? We see people eating uh, quinoa with braised mushrooms and, you know, asparagus on the side drizzled with lemon and Parmesan. And we're like, yo, I'm just trying to take my skillet out of my dishwasher. And I know it's not even supposed to be in there in the first place, but I don't have time to cook. So what is one simple thing you can do? I talk about this all the time on my Instagram and make sure to follow me at Jillian Q Co for daily inspiration and health tips, but buy rotisserie chickens. Okay. Now my favorite one is from Whole Foods because they have one that has no sodium. Um, and that's what I prefer because, you know, sometimes rotisserie chickens can have a lot of sodium. Um, but if you don't have a Whole Foods or if that is outside of your budget, another thing you can do is you can buy your rotisserie chicken from whatever store works for you and you can just, uh, you can rinse the meat off or you can boil it before you use it if you desire. But rotisserie chicken is great and you can do lots of things with a rotisserie chicken. You can make sandwiches with it and it might even be cheaper than that lunch meat that you get with like this much for like $10. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, but you can make sandwiches with it. You can cut it up and make tacos with it. You can add it to pasta, make an Alfredo dish or a dish with red sauce and chicken. Listen, I've done that all the time. So good. So good. You can do rice and chicken. You can do so many things. I'm going to tell you one easy meal right now that doesn't even require an oven, but it's still simple. Okay. Get your rotisserie chicken. Slice up a few pieces. You get some cucumbers. You slice up those cucumbers. You get a baked potato. You can do a sweet potato if you want to. You wash that thing off, prick some holes in it. Make sure to prick the hole so it doesn't explode. Put it in your microwave. Quick, simple meal. And you didn't even have to go to get any fast food. Told you I got you. If you're going to try it, let me know in the comments. So first one, you diet. Okay. What's another reason why some people struggle with a healthy lifestyle, even though they're trying so hard? You don't enjoy your food. You don't enjoy your food. Oh 
oh my gosh, this is like such a big one. We are guilt tripped into eating what we are shown, what we are um, displayed in front of us. Look, what am I trying to say? Yo, give me a second. We are guilt tripped into trying to eat what we are um, presented. Yes, that's the word. What we are presented as a healthy lifestyle. So what do we see on TV? What do we see on social media? What do, you, what do we see? We see things that are green. We see things that are vegan, vegetarian. We see things that are all the way from scratch, organic, homemade, or this is another thing I talk about. We see things that don't have a lot of flavor. We see things that are not culturally relevant. So then we're like, okay, what does it mean to be healthy? I guess it means that I can't eat my favorite, uh, you know, cultural foods. I can't eat soul food anymore. I can't eat Caribbean food anymore. I can't eat African food anymore and be healthy. Or I have to go on this extreme diet or extreme fast. I'm going to tell you right now, that's not sustainable. And I just want to say for anybody who's vegan on here, I'm not saying that vegan is bad. If you like vegan, if that is a lifestyle you enjoy, enjoy it. Do it. I'm not trying to stop you. But if you know you're trying to go vegan just because you're like, okay, I have to do it. I'm trying. Like, you're, you're missing the point. You're missing the point. Let's start with finding a place where we can enjoy the food that we like. So I encourage you now, you can stop the video right now. You can wait till I'm done. But I want you to take a piece of paper or that's the old school way or the new school way. Go on your phone, go on notes. And I want you to write down what are the foods that you like. This is the process of learning how to enjoy a guilt free lifestyle because you're probably going to feel guilty. You might feel guilty as you write this down like, oh, oh, my gosh, I like macaroni and cheese. Like, but that's not good. That's not healthy. No, no, no. I want you to write it down and just stop there because there is room for all of the foods that you like in a healthy lifestyle. Stay with me. Stay with me. Okay. So what does that look like? Let's say you do like mac and cheese. That's one of my favorite foods. You can have a meal with mac and cheese. Okay. And then with that mac and cheese, you add some vegetables with it. Maybe you, like I said, I love cucumbers because they're so quick. You add some cucumbers. Maybe you don't like cucumbers with, without any seasoning. So you drizzle them with some vinaigrette or you add some salt and pepper, whatever you just you just zhuzh it up a little bit do whatever you got to do okay you got your mac and cheese you got your cucumbers you can even add another vegetable if you want you can add some broccoli if it doesn't mess with your gut i mean with your stomach you can add um some carrots whatever you want and then you add some meat if you want to but you don't have to voila you got a meal what did i do there i took foods that i liked or foods that i know many people like and then i added some things to it so add you know add a vegetable to it if you want to you can even add some beans if you want to, to your different meals. Now, I'm going to say, I don't know about beans and mac and cheese. That might not work for everyone's stomach. You know, that might be a, a gas causing situation. I'm not trying to cause any um, issues in anyone's household. Okay. Listen, if you don't want, I didn't tell you to do that. Okay. But you can add beans, beans to something else. Um, bottom line is just adding different foods along with the foods that you like. So that way you're not, you're not taking any away. You're not taking anything away. You're adding things. Okay. So that's the first one. Now, what's the next one? That was actually the second point. Now, what's the third point? Oh my gosh. This is one that I think we all struggle with. You're always stressed. Okay. What does stress have to do with a healthy lifestyle? Well, studies show that people who are chronically stressed have a much higher chance of getting um, diabetes, cancer, um, migraines. Do you know that even um, other things like uh, well, mental health um, challenges, depression, anxiety, weight gain, all of these things are affected by our stress levels. A higher amount of stress increases our cortisol look it up google it after I'm, after i'm done with this video and cortisol affects many things it affects our blood sugar did you know that you can actually increase your chances of insulin resistance just by being chronically stressed so i'm not trying to guilt trip you i know that for some of us life really is stressful okay 
life may really be stressful for you and I'm not trying to come for you or make you feel bad. But what I am inviting you to do is I'm inviting you to think differently about this. And I want you to think about this from a freedom mindset of, I may be going through X, Y, Z, but I will try one thing. And um, I'll just tell a quick one minute story about this. So like during the pandemic, it was extremely stressful because I gave birth to uh, my son literally the day that the pandemic started and we couldn't have anybody over. And I was freaking out and my husband had to go back to work like a couple of days after my son was born. I was exhausted and he was the ch type of child that did not want to sleep. He actually didn't sleep until he was like 18 months old. So like, like waking up through the night constantly, I was so stressed out. I was so exhausted. And then my husband had to work more hours during the pandemic. Um, he was, he was working like literally from sun, uh, sun up, sundown. I was so exhausted. Yeah, I was so stressed. Um, my hair was falling out. It was just, there was a lot going on. And I just remember I was looking on social media at people who were like doing the thing. And I was like, why, why can't I do this? Why can't my life just be a little bit simpler? And the truth is so many other people were struggling in ways that I was not. And that may be your story even now, even though the pandemic is technically over, I want you to know, just do what you can. A stress, a, a lifestyle that has less stress is not necessarily a lifestyle that like you get everything you want. That is a part of it. And some of us do need some um, changes in our life. Some of us do need to, a different job or we need a little bit more income to be less stressed. But there are a few things you can do. Like I said, I'm going to keep the ball rolling with this. But one of the things you can do is try to find a way to find something to ground yourself. So um, I am a faith believing person. I'm a spiritual person. And one thing I like to do is I like to turn on worship music or I like to get my journal and I like to just, you know, write prayers on my in my journal and just talk to God about how I feel. That helps me so much because it helps me to release a lot of the feelings and a lot of the stress that I have. So that's one thing that I encourage you to do. Turn on music. It doesn't have to be worship music. It could be meditation music, whatever it is that works for you. To just close your eyes for a second and just just allow peace to enter into your heart so i encourage you uh, to do that as well that's just one thing you can do if you have any other ideas feel free to share with the community because listen i'm not trying to I, I want us to continue to share to continue to connect so decrease that stress now the next one you don't sleep oh my gosh <laughs> This one is tough for a lot of us, tough for a lot of us, especially if you're a parent of an infant or a parent of young children who decide that they want to wake up in the middle of the night because they're hungry or um, because the infant is hungry or they had a bad dream or whatever it is. Sleep can be challenging for some of us. But one thing that makes it even harder, got to come close for this one, Listen, I'm not coming for you. I know you're probably watching this video on a cell phone. I like my cell phone. I'm recording this video on my cell phone, but being in the bed late at night, it's three in the morning and you're str you're scrolling on TikTok because you're like, I just need this break. I understand because I've been there before. I'm not even coming for you, but I want you to find some place where you can rest. Maybe you start something small. Like maybe you say, okay, Tonight, instead of staying up till 3 a.m., I'm only going to stay up till 1 a.m. Like maybe something small like that. Or maybe you tell yourself, okay, I'm going to start reading books. Why? I learned for, my, for me because, like I said, I found myself doing that too. I needed something mindless to do after be, like taking care of the kids all day to help me to relax. So I started crocheting. Yes, I know. My millennial self, I started crocheting, but my mom taught me how to do it. Um, when I was younger and hey, it worked for me. There are other things you can do. You can do your nails, that's for the ladies, of course. Um, you can read a book. You probably can see some of my books behind and this book, Ghetto Gastro, you gotta check it out. It's a great book for your coffee table. It looks good, you can see in display. You can find it on my website at jillianq.co. If you go on my blog, I have a list of different books that are curated 
um, for African Americans, people of color. So check it out. Uh, but anyway, uh, read a book. You can try that. You can try writing. Um, you can try a bunch of different things. Let me think of any other ideas. Um, oh, yes. You can listen to a book on Audible. I did this a lot, too. I put my headphones in and I would just listen to a book. So that way um, I was still able to engage with something, but I wasn't like on that bright phone because the brightness from that phone, it can mess, it can mess with your sleep and it can make it harder to relax and create that melatonin to calm down and just be able to fall asleep. But yes, sleep does affect your health. It can affect your weight. It can affect, um, uh, your blood sugar it can affect a lot of different things. So sleep. Now I don't want to make this video too long, so I might have to cut this into two, but I'll share one more thing. Yes, I am going to do a part two for this. So this is the last one I'm going to do. And I'm going to talk more about this in the next video. But the last one I'm going to talk about is this. You have been living with cultural shame regarding your health. Now, what do I mean by that? Okay. If you are someone who is of African descent, if you're an African-American, uh, Caribbean, whatever, you know, you're within the African diaspora and you have been trying to get healthy. Have you ever had this thought or has anyone ever told this to you before? You can't eat that. You can't eat that. That's slave food. You can't eat that. That's bad for you. You can't do that. See, that's why black people are always unhealthy. That's why black people always got diabetes. That's why black people always got this. Have you, if you've ever experienced that, just let me know in the comments because I know I have. And it left me for years thinking that like, okay, black people must not know how to be healthy because we eat all this food, like all this greasy food. We don't eat a lot of fresh food. You know, everything is cooked down so low, you know, to the point where there's no nutrients left. We're all overweight. We're all fat. Like, oh, uh, we don't, why are we like that? That's what I used to think because that's what I, I was um, uh, told all the time. That was the narrative that I was given until I began to do a little bit more research. And I found out that that's not the whole story, y'all, mm -mm. which is why reading is so important. So important. If you haven't seen the Netflix documentary High on the Hog, you have to check it out. But along with that, you also have to check out the book that the docuseries was based off of. It's called High on the Hog. It's written by um, author Jess Dr. Jessica B. Harris. She is an amazing, amazing scholar, author, historian. You, you got to check her out. She talks about um, uh, the history of our cultural foods, our cultural roots, and how those things uh, have affected the way we see um, ourselves today and different things we can do to come back to the things that our ancestors used to do. So I encourage you to check it out. And once again, yes, all those books are on my website. I'm just trying to help y'all out. So I'll link that in the description box if you want to check out those different books. Um, but along the way, I, I found out that the reason why that's not the story is because of something called social determ the turn bleh. <laughs> social determinants of health. What is social determinants of health. Social determinants of health are um, various factors that affect someone's health. Okay, I'm talking about all the things that I've mentioned already. I'm talking about stress, sleep. I'm also talking about things like pollution, okay, water quality, access to grocery stores, access to fresh produce, um, good quality schools, good neighborhoods, walkable neighborhoods, um, parks that children can go to that are safe. Listen, y'all. Oh my gosh. All these things affect someone's health. And when young people don't have access to these things, by the time they become adults, they have been set up to the point that it makes it almost impossible to be healthy. In fact, there is a study that shows, and I'll link um, a blog where I talked about this. There's a study that was done, um, I think it was completed last year in 2022, 
it was uh, uh, in regards to diabetes, they found out that literally our country is designed for people to become diabetic. They said that um, you can do everything right according to, you know, the um, food recommendations and take your medication and literally diabetes can still be waiting at your corner, not wanting to um, work according to the way that doctors and scientists thought it would at first, that if you just control your food and portion everything and do this, then it'll all be, I'll be perfect. I'll be good. Like y'all, that's why I'm trying to talk about this whole guilt-free wellness thing. Cause it's, it's crazy. Okay. It's crazy. So social deter- determinants of health. So what can you do? Well, I encourage you to really take some time to learn more about your history Because if you don't know where you came from, you don't know where you're going. I know it sounds cliche, but it's not cliche because you think that you're fighting one battle, but you don't even know what battle you're fighting because you don't know what stories have been hidden from you. Like, for example, the whole thing with soul food and that black food is bad. First of all, another great author I love, Tony Tipton Martin, she talks about this all the time. And um, one of her books, I actually have it and I did... um, I did one of the recipes from her book. You can watch it. I'll link the video that uh, I have in regards to this book. But she says, she talks about the fact that like this whole thing of like slave food and soul food and like that's black food. Y'all, that's a lie. Okay. So many American dishes were created, created by African-Americans. I'm talking about ice cream, y'all. I'm talking about fruit pie. Enslaved Africans were the ones who put fruit in the pie and um, created what we know as all these different fruit pies because the European way was adding meat to pie, okay? I'm talking about potato chips, y'all, potato chips. Um, There are so many different things that African-Americans brought to this country um, that influenced our cuisine. So many different vegetables, okay? Why was I just talking about cucumbers? Melons, melons, watermelons, all these different things, Uh, greens. I just get so overwhelmed thinking about it because we we have such a rich heritage of healthy living that we don't even know about. We don't even know about. So this whole idea of unhealthy food, slave food, and, you know, it, it's more than what you think. So I'm going to stop the video here. I'm going to do a part two, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, reasons why your healthy lifestyle isn't working the way you want it to work. So stay tuned for part two. And thank you so much for watching this video. I encourage you to share it with a friend to help them out. And please make sure to hit the bell notification so that way you get all of the notifications for when a new video comes out and make sure to subscribe. Thank you so much. And you can find a ton of different links for uh, different books. And I also have a free ebook that talks all about these different things. I will link it in the description box, but thank you so much. And I hope you have a good day. Adios.